text on the saying to cut to the chase. Uh, as <laughs> well, somebody does. Uh, as it was saying, we're happy to be this month. We're happy to be uh, teaming up with the Graphic Artists Guild because about two weeks, three weeks ago, the Graphic Artists Guild just uh, published our 16th uh, edition of our of the Industry Bible, the Handbook of Pricing and Ethical Guidelines, or as we like to call it, the PEGS which is a font of information for anybody who wants to function as a professional because I'm, I'm, not, I'm sure I'm not alone here. The, 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 more, the more descriptions you give, the okay. less I have to say something. <laughs> okay, but anyway, Paul, going, if okay. you'd like. Okay, uh, but anyway, uh, with that, with that uh, I'm sure the new people have, uh, will admit that it can be a little intimidating for first time viewers, which is why we have gotten our wonderful expert to walk us through us this evening. Well, I wouldn't call myself an expert, uh, but that's gonna be part of my presentation anyway. So, okay. so, anyway, so anyway, with us is the Western rep representative for Graphic Artists Guild. You, you, we, you probably know him because he's given several uh, wonderful talks on other topics before. James Stowe. Thank you, everybody. Good uh, evening, hopefully, for most people. I would assume evening. Yeah, there's, I, I doubt anybody in a time zone where it's not the evening. Um, now I'm just rambling. Um, can, you, can I share my screen? Is that capable? Yes, yes you can. Uh, but actually, I, let me make sure I, uh, it is capable now. It is possible now. All right, great. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And let me go ahead and start. Yay. So welcome. Uh, tonight, I am going to talk to you about the Graphic Artist Guild's Handbook for Pricing and Ethical Guidelines, uh, which um, uh, Bill has mentioned it is known somewhat in shorthand as the pegs, but we like to consider it the uh, guild handbook or the handbook or the pricing and ethical guidelines. Uh, but you can call it whatever you'd like. Woo! Oh my goodness. Am I still here? You're still here. You're still here. Uh, my computer fell. <laughs> Give me one second. It, it, it dropped me completely out of everything. Um, okay, where was I? Well, that's an interesting way to start. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, let me start uh, by first talking a little bit about who I am and why I'm here uh, talking about uh, the Guild Handbook to you. So um, my name is James Stowe. Uh, I am the West Region representative of the Graphic Artists Guild. So if you are in one of the 11 uh, Western states in the United States, I am your region representative. If you have any questions, if you have uh, any concerns, if you would like to volunteer to do some work, if you have seen me uh, on numerous, numerous events that I have put on, um, mostly uh, because of COVID online, um, I, am the, I am the guy that you can reach out to with any of your Graphic Artist Guild questions. Um, I have been with the Graphic Artist Guild uh, in this position since 2019. Um, I am a cartoonist, an illustrator, uh, a graphic designer, and an art teacher. Um, I have worn pretty much every hat you can possibly wear in the graphic arts industry, um, except photography. I've, I've art directed photography, but I, I taught photography, but I cannot take a picture to save my life. I don't know why that is. It just is one of those <laughs> things. I, I know everything that goes into making good photograph, but I cannot capture it uh, at all. Um, it's one of my shortcomings. Um, so I have actually known about the Graphic Artists Guild um, since I was in college, way, way back in 1993. Um, and I know there's some of you out there that's like, oh, he's a baby. And I appreciate that from all of you. I really like that. Um, 
1993, I was introduced to uh, the Guild Handbook by an illustration professor of mine um, who consider it his only book for the class in illustration I was taking. It was the only textbook that we used. Um, and I have used the handbook uh, as a reference uh, ever since. Um, I probably like some uh, of you, I did not know for the longest time that it was actually associated with an organization a trade organization that benefits uh, creative professionals. Um, I just knew it as a resource that I, every time I saw it out in the wild, I picked it up because it's very useful in what it does. So um, let's talk a little bit then about what it does. So uh, the Graphic Artist Guild Handbook, Pricing and Ethical Guidelines has been published um, almost every three years since the very first uh, handbook came out in 1973. Um, it has been uh, uh, created and, and compiled and edited and released by the Graphic Artists Guild since then. The very first uh, handbook was a 20 page uh, booklet. The most current edition, the one behind me right here, uh, the 16th edition, is nearly 500 pages. So it has changed quite a bit in uh, um, the almost 50 years it has been in publication. Uh, it is one year older than I am, which uh, is pretty astounding. Um, it is uh, at its uh, core, a comprehensive reference guide of, uh, and best practices for graphic designers, illustrators, web designers, animators, surface artists, and which is why I'm here tonight, cartoonists. Um, it includes references and best practices on how to start and maintain uh, your own successful graphic artist business. Uh, it contains pricing charts that are compiled by members in our industry and reviewed by experts in every graphic art field. It is a salary guide for the employed. It has testimonies from the self-employed and it has expansive trade tips for both of those categories. Uh, it is a resource for legal rights, for self-promotion, for trade shows, for websites, uh, you name it. There is something, whoop, oh, I didn't mean to move forward. There is something in the Graphic Artist uh, Handbook, Graphic Artist Guild Handbook, that can benefit you at pretty much every stage of what you do. And uh, I am coming on here tonight uh, not to talk to you as an expert, um, but to talk to you as somebody who's used this book his entire career. When I got my first job in the industry, in 1994 till now, I have always had a copy of the Graphic Artist Guild handbook with me. Before I knew there was a Graphic Artist Guild, I was using this book. It has been essential to me and my development uh, as a graphic artist. Um, and I, I wanna share a little bit about why that is with you tonight. Um, a little bit more about me, uh, for the past eight years, uh, eight years ago, I, I quit a very lucrative, um, uh, creative director position at a, uh, international company. And I decided what I really wanted to do. And, uh, God bless my wife for agreeing that this was a somewhat good idea. I, I wanted to create. I, I had moved up in management to the point that uh, I was no longer creating any work. And I wanted the opportunity to see if I could go it on my own and, and be a freelance professional. Uh, so I opened James Stowe Illustration eight years ago. 
and it is still uh, going strong eight years later. And most of the success of that, I can uh, point back at least somewhat to the Graphic Artist Guild Handbook. Um, let me move on. I want to talk a little bit about, so this is the 16th edition. So um, I want to tell you a little bit about what is in the 16th edition and kind of how it differs, uh, differs from editions that have come before it. <clears throat> so what's new in the edition of the Graphic Artist Handbook? Um, the 16th edition uh, has been totally reorganized into five distinct parts with an, append with an appendix that contains reference aids and documents. In part one, um, it focuses on running a successful graphic artist business. It has chapters that cover best practices, maintaining professionalism and networking, um, all the issues that come with running your own creative business, and there's a brand new chapter that has never been in uh, the handbook before that covers how to maximize your income. It, it goes over um, some interesting steps on how to make sure you are um, getting the most out of your business. Part two, which is probably the part most people think of when they think of the pegs, is the pricing guidelines. Um, one of the things that makes the Guild Handbook unique is that it compiles about every three years um, pricing information from professionals in the field. It asks them what they charge for what they do. And it tries to create a guideline on what is a safe and ethical pricing structure for our industry. I can't think of um, another field that has that kind of resource. Yeah. More often than not, um, talking about what you make and how you price uh, is kind of a taboo subject. But here for the past almost 50 years, uh, we here in the graphic arts field have had a guidebook that literally does that exact thing. It, it compiles information across the country about what people um, charge clients, um, how to structure those payments based on the type of work that you are doing. And our guidelines in this book um, have specific information for graphic designers for web and interactive designers, for illustrators, for animators, for pattern and surface designers, and for cartoonists and, and people in the comic book industry. We talk about um, the prices that are average for those fields. Uh, we talk about salary information, and we talk about trade practices for each of those disciplines. Um, I, I would say it is, it is what people think of when they think of the Guild Handbook. Um, and it is, it is a reference that I have used personally uh, in my own business for years and years and years. I have always sought the, the guidance of the handbook um, when it comes to whether I am pricing myself correctly for what I am doing. And more often than not, I usually charge more than what the handbook it, uh, suggests, um, but that's only because um, I, I wanna make more. Um, part three teaches you how to best protect your creative pr uh, business and your intellectual property. One of the key and core fundamentals of the Graphic Artists Guild is advocacy for creative professionals. And part of that is knowing your legal rights and knowing what recourse you have when you deal with issues in your creative business or violations of your own intellectual property. 
We have an entire part of the book, several chapters that cover your legal rights, as well as covering uh, contracting and how to do that in a way that you can feel safe and secure that the contracts that you are making are best for your business. Part four, uh, which is actually surprisingly enough, my favorite part of this edition uh, is 11 separate interviews with individual graphic artists throughout the disciplines and fields. Um, it talks to 11 different people. It, we, it shows their artwork. Um, it asks them um, in an interview style um, how the handbook has helped them individually in their careers. Uh, it, it, was, it was pretty eye-opening to read those. That's actually, uh, since I've gotten the 16th edition, I have looked um, for two things in it so far. The first thing I've done is I've read those interviews because I, that struck me as, as very interesting and it's a somewhat new feature. Um, and the second thing I did was I checked the appendix just to make sure that my legalese on my invoices was okay. Uh, it's always good to make sure that you update um, your invoicing every once in a while. It's one of the first things I do every time I get a copy of the handbook. And finally, part five, let's see if I can move my, yep, is um, a resource and reference section um, with all manner. As a matter of fact, let me go ahead and get down my, uh, oof, my pegs. Uh, and I just want to go over some of the references that are in this section. So they are recommended books, um, relevant publications, industry directories, promotional and marketing resources, employment and freelance opportunities, um, different organizations for graphic artists, different conferences, trade shows, and merchandise markets, uh, useful software and tools, online classes and courses, and informational or uh, yeah, informative websites and blogs. So the last half of the book is just um, other resources that you can use to help with your business. And then finally, the appendix is literally filled with um, actual release forms with letters of agreements with estimates, forms, with everything you need to create the backbone of your pricing system. Um, and finally, uh, when my talk is done, when we're done um, with questions, um, there are two things that I would like you to, if you are interested more in the uh, handbook and you wanna learn more from it, and about it, um, there are two specific places I want you to go. And I will uh, copy and paste these links into the chat. The first <clears throat> is a discussion uh, with Jessica Abel, who wrote the foreword for the 16th edition. Uh, and she talks about why <clears throat> this uh, is a textbook that as an educator and instructor that she um, asks her students to purchase. Uh, and uh, her foreword in the book is actually a fairly interesting as well. It's a great read. I would recommend you take a look at that. And then um, there is a webinar that happens. Uh, the Graphic Artists Guild puts on regular webinars every single month. Um, there was a webinar on in April that talked about how the, uh, the handbook was designed by the people who designed it, including the uh, cover artist, um, who is an amazing cut paper artist, um, and some of the people who put together the book. So I would recommend you look at that as well. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. That was... 
That was my share portion of this evening. Um, I wanted to go, I, now that I've gotten the book down, as you can see, it's right here. It's uh, a fairly chunky uh, read. Uh, it, th there's a, a, a dense amount of information in these books. Um, this one, especially uh, weighing in at almost 500 pages. Um, and while you may not use everything in this book, I assure you that there are th definitely things in this book that you will and uh, will probably end up relying on. I know I do, um, especially when it comes to the pricing part. I think that's one of the reasons why this particular uh, handbook has endured for as long as it has is because it provides a resource that is so unique to our industry that I don't think I could compete without it. Um, since a, a large portion of our industry is um, self-employed, we work freelance, um, having that resource, having the idea of knowing what to charge and what the industry expects and can handle is important. It helps all of us out. Um, I am, uh, I, I want to stress too that I am not necessarily here to sell you the book. I am just here to talk to you about why I use the book. And if that gets you curious um, to pick it up, great. If that doesn't, if that's not, if, if after my talk, uh, you're like, oh, I don't know if I, I absolutely need that thing. I totally understand that. But I will tell you that it, in my experience, um, as a freelance professional, I have always used this book. I have always used the handbook. It has always been a resource for me. I don't remember a time in my career where I did not reference the handbook. And I am going to admit something tonight that uh, probably I've only admitted to one or two people. When um, a, good, a very good friend of mine, um, uh, Mark Monolux, who I would imagine most of you know, um, when he reached out to me that the Graphic Artists Guild was looking for a representative, um, and he put me in touch with Bill, uh, I hadn't really put together in my mind that the guild and the handbook were the same organization. So when I did figure that out, I couldn't think of a group that I would much that I would much rather represent than the Graphic Artists Guild, since the handbook has been so helpful to me in my career. Um, so that is why not only am I here tonight but why I serve as the uh, West Regional Representative for the Graphic Artist Guild. Um, that, I don't think that was 45 minutes, but it was a good solid chunk of time, um, I hope. <laughs> I'm happy to answer any questions now that I've, I've said my thing, um, knowing that I, I, I will stress, I am not, uh, I am not, one of the writers of the book, obviously. I did not work on the cover of the book. Um, I did submit information uh, as a member of the Graphic Artists Guild. Uh, I was solicited for my own pricing information. And this is the first uh, edition I actually got to submit information. I, I was actually very excited to submit information for a thing that I've used my entire career. So that was cool. Um, so that's pretty much the only part of the creation of this book I was actually involved in. Um, otherwise, I am just here as an avid user of the the, uh, the handbook. But I would be happy, let's see, is, is there anything that's going on in chat? Let me, before uh, we open it to any questions. Um, oh, Mark's here, lovely. <laughs> I didn't even know he was in here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, post those two links that I wanted you to take a look at. Uh, 
Um, I would also be remiss if I didn't let you know that as a member, I and I know I just prefaced this by saying I'm not trying to sell you the book, but that's true, I'm not. Uh, as a member of the Graphic Artists Guild, you get the book for free. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Yes, absolutely. I accidentally ordered it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, you should be getting a copy. It's part of your membership. So the question I have is, sometimes I want to get the information more quickly. And if I have it digitally, I can turn it to audio. So it just reads it to me. Is that possible? Um, I do not believe that there is a current uh, online copy. I know that the 14th edition was um, purely digital. Mm -hmm. I think the decision this year, and uh, Bill, please correct me if I'm wrong. The decision was to keep it a physical edition. Um, and I don't know what the plans are for the digital edition. To my the best of my knowledge, this is the last print edition. And yes, that is what I understand as well. Wow. Gotcha. And I've, and I've, and there's been a handful of people I've talked to who are not completely happy with that. Who knows, we may change our minds in time, but that's the latest. I think if we keep adding pages to it, it has to go digital because goodness, this thing is heavy. Does anyone else have any questions? I, I'd i like to ask, um, I'm not a member, but I'm wondering how much is membership? I live on, in Seattle and I'm wondering what the benefits would be besides the book. Oh man, you're hitting me with hard questions. Um, that's why I have an administrator mostly for questions like how much does it cost? Um, I should have been prepared for how much uh, membership costs. Let me look it up real quick. If, if Bill, if you have the answer to that question, that'd be great. Uh, I checked it's still 200. <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah. There you go. Um, now, as for what you else you get with the membership, that I'm happy to answer, uh, especially here in the West region. Um, we do a uh, large amount of programming. Not only do you gain access to uh, a, a fairly active social network, um, we put on uh, two uh, regional events uh, every month, um, and we put on a weekly uh, uh, social event every Monday. Um, you gain access to a portfolio site um, that can be viewed at uh, the Guild website. Um, you gain access to an archive of um, member-only webinars that are put on by um, industry professionals. Um, you gain access to uh, a network of working professionals that you can um, ask questions about and uh, um, gain information. Let's see if there's, uh, <clears throat> I'm trying to think of some, any other. I have some more features. I'm sure you do. I'm so <laughs> glad you're here. I'm tagging you in. By becoming a member of the Graphic Artists Guild, uh, you become affiliated with a known, an organization that's known for standardized business practices. One of the four things that uh, a legal professional will look at when deciding arbitration is if you are part of a professional organization and how that professional organization is respected within the community. I have on all of my invoices that I'm a member of the graphic art, that I'm a member of the graphic artist guild. Some of those webinars that uh, so referred to they're fantastic. If you want to learn about licensing, there's several different licensing webinars. Some of them are actually not just other designers, but various card, uh, greeting card manufacturers have did a panel where they were telling us exactly what they were looking for and how you should present ideas and concepts to the greeting card industry. Extremely helpful. We have a professional who does nothing but licensing 
and she was talking about how to get into it. We have another person who was a licensing coach and a licensing agent, and she was talking about how to get into licensing. There is such a plethora of great specific topics inside the webinars for you to go in and just dig into. Uh, that's a very invaluable resource that the Guild didn't have before the internet came along. I also, uh, there's a new member benefit that I actually didn't know about it. Um, it's insurance. Oh, we what actually, kind of insurance? We offer insurance through the Lighthouse Insurance Group for health insurance. That's fascinating. Uh, it's a major medical, short-term, um, vision, dental, critical care, and supplemental insurance coverage. The Guild also tries to put out uh, on average about once a year a whole list of membership benefits. This can range anything from you know getting discounted rates for courier services through DHL or America or uh, UPS or what have you. So these vary from year to year. But there's other discounts, like say through arts and craft stores or um, book suppliers. So it's it's great to go in and to dig into those memberships because one of the things that the national board loves to do is find new membership benefits that they can promote to you, and they're constantly changing. I will also mention that all the the um, the resource documents in the back of the handbook um, are also available as digital versions of those um, those pieces. So uh, you don't have to scan or anything. There are vi digital versions, even though the handbook itself, is, there's not a digital version, all the reference material, all the, the um, example copies of forms and what have you. We have, There are digital copies of those. So can I go into a little bit of about the history of the, the pegs? Um, you, you certainly, can. if it's all right with Bill, it's all right with me. Go for it. There you go. The uh, Graphic Artist Guild Handbook actually started off as a pamphlet that one designer inside the guild back when it was starting up many decades ago decided to produce and just put out as a small brochure to other guild members. That little hand uh, pamphlet was called the handbook and quickly the guild took, you know, said, oh, this is nifty. Uh, why don't we expand this out as a benefit and then they found that it became a, a it was quickly requested by non-members. So they thought, oh, this could be a revenue source for us. Let's sell the, uh, the handbook out to, to other people. And that's how it's gone through every three few years. Uh, it's been updated and, and put out because it needed to be kept fresh and current. I would highly recommend that if you see an old copy of the pegs lingering somewhere, that you buy it. Coming, sweetheart. <laughs> right, my wife called me to dinner. For example, one of the <laughs> things that's not in the current pegs, because it's not there anymore, is fashion illustration with markers. So all those prices are, are now gone to us because we can't, you know, no one's well, it's, it's coming back. Marker art is coming, making a comeback, but those prices aren't listed in the pegs. But then again, 20 years ago, websites weren't in the pegs. That was something that the guild had to research and make the pricing structure and put that in. I was on the team that helped with that. Anyway, so they're trying to keep it current and always up to date. And I, I'm of the vanguard that says that there's always going to be a printed handbook because, hey, it's a revenue stream. Who doesn't like that? And now I have to go to dinner. Bye. All right. Thank you very much, Mark. I appreciate the help. Thank you. I don't know what I would do without Mark Monlux. He is he is my shadow. Or I'm his shadow. It's one of the two things. I'd imagine could, I'm his shadow. Could I just say that um, 
there's a lot of links on the chat. If everyone has not punched the little chat button at the bottom of the screen, why don't you punch it and you can read the links that um, people have been posting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Does anyone else have any questions? I'll try to muddle through them, I promise. <laughs> I will say this, if you are a member uh, and you have not received your handbook yet, give it some time. Um, I just got mine uh, maybe a week or so ago. Um, I know some of my team hasn't gotten theirs yet. So uh, just be patient. If you haven't gotten yours in say a month or two, let me know or let um, uh, your admin know for this region. Um, and also, and I always like to ask this, if there are members out there who would love to volunteer uh, in our, our region, I am always looking for help. So if you are somebody who would like to participate more in your region, um, I currently have a volunteer team of five individuals, but I'm always looking for more. Um, if you are in the West region and um, looking to be part of a very active uh, team that puts on a bunch of programming, please let me know. So since I accidentally ordered a book not knowing, is there a way to cancel that? Uh, did, where did you order the book from? Online, I think. To, from like a like a Amazon or uh, oh uh, that might have been it it might have been through Amazon yeah uh, I know Amazon takes uh, returns pretty uh, they mm -hmm. they have like no well, questions asked returns so I so haven't you, gotten it yet so I can cancel years, it years for free I would also recommend if you purchased it it makes a great gift <laughs> <laughs> there you go mm -hmm. if you know somebody who's just about to get in the industry who's been in the industry for a while. Um, it, it, it is an invaluable resource, uh, mm -hmm. and it's a resource that is constantly changing, mm -hmm. uh, which is, uh, really one of the strengths of it. The idea that, um, it does get updated roughly every three years, um, means that it is constantly an evolving and relevant document. So I say that I used it for my crash course on business practices. So. Yeah, no, they, the, uh, there's, there's, there's so much information. It's, it's incredibly dense, the amount of information. Uh, the, the other thing, yeah. which I, I don't know if it was mentioned as to one of the, the, the benefits of membership, um, legal defense uh, and, and legal uh, assistance, grievance assistance, is, is a very important part of the Graphic Artist Guild. Um, we work very hard to make sure that not only our members, but the creative community as a whole is treated ethically and fairly by uh, others in the industry, by clients by employers and as a member of the guild you have access to a legal referral network um, that can give you special expertise with copyright intellectual property with contract negotiation i mean you name it the James, can I can I mention something that I don't know if it's true, but it used it used at one time was, isn't sure. the Graphic Artist Guild also part of AFL CIO? We are not anymore. We were not anymore. Okay, at one time you were, which I was thinking that was where you're getting some of those powerhouse legal no, backup. No, we were uh, back when we were a union. We are now a trade organization, so we are a slightly different kind of organization. But we have an advocate in Washington, D.C. Um, that works with lawmakers to, uh, to work on legislation that benefits cre the creative industry. Um, and we are constantly posting. Uh, advocacy is a really strong um, component of what we do in the Guild. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, 
uh, twice a year as one of the events that the, the West Region holds is we invite our advocacy uh, uh, individual to just give us uh, updates on what's been going on on the legal side of uh, the industry, what, what we can expect, what we can look for. Yeah, I mean, our biggest success to crow on right, right now is the, is the CASE Act. Which yep, absolutely. We worked really, really hard to make sure that thing got through. Mm -hmm. What is it? CASE Act. What does, to put it into very simple terms, it's essentially, it provides a, uh, a small claims court for graphic artists. Yeah, for um, like copyright disputes, which in the age of the internet is an amazing thing. Because content creators and content aggregators are two radically different things. And very often your work is, uh, I, I am uh, not regularly, but I'd say about every two or three months, I am sent links from random people that show my artwork on um, material that is being sold without yeah. my knowledge or permission. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and the CASE Act will create a, um, a, a basically a, a legal um, avenue that didn't exist before that will allow you without breaking the bank to uh, go after and defend yourself against those kinds of, of, of violations. It's an uh, amazing thing. Absolutely amazing. Because before this, it was essentially a bidding war against... Uh... And more often than not, the people that are using your work, uh, they have a lot more resource to get yeah, to fight you than you do. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. So does anyone else have any questions? Otherwise, I'm going to hand it back to Bill. Um, I'm really, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to just talk a little bit about uh, the pricing and ethical guidelines. Uh, like I said, the one of the main reasons um, I'm here tonight is just because uh, it, it's, it's something I'm, I'm really passionate about the, to be in an industry that has this kind of resource for people, um, says a lot about the, the industry that I work in. Um, when we constantly talk about and support each other, when it comes to best practices and pricing and um, you know, how we can all benefit and not just one of us benefits. Uh, that says a lot about what we do as people. So, um, I really, every chance I get to talk about the handbook, I will. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I've had copies of the previous editions of the pay. I've always found it extremely useful. I'm extremely pleased that the organization puts it out because effectively puts you on an equal standing to the other major professional organizations. Uh, those building uh, 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 engineers that put out the uniform building code, things like that. And it's operated in the same way, which I have always found impressive as well, just because it is always updated. You can be sure that the information is as fresh as it can be um, to the best support the artist. Uh, just as a historical note, um, I don't recall hearing why uh, the guild decided that, that it wasn't a union and was going to be a trade organization. Uh, what was the rough thinking? You know I wish I knew all the, as I am, as I said, I'm, I'm uh, somewhat fairly new to being part of the organization. I've only been part of it since 2019. I was one of the people who just used the, the pegs and didn't even think about who was producing this work. It wasn't until I really, I was a few years into um, working for myself, um, creating my own business, that I was like, oh my God, I really need to get involved in this organization um, more than just using what they produce. I want to be part of it. So can, I, can I interrupt for just a moment here? Larry asked a question. I think I know what your difference might be. A union. My dad was a teamster. A union is commonly an organization to help with workers' rights as opposed to, uh, not opposed to, but to work with employers. 
whereas so many people in the Graphic Artists Guild are individual artists and writers who own their own work. Now that would make you trade people instead of union people. You're not actually specifically working for other people in another industry. You're working for yourself very often, yeah. even within the industry, but that's that's the difference. That is probably the difference. It was also- That's what I had imagined, um, just because conceptually it, it makes you not people dependent on some employer for your livelihood, but the actual creative uh, people who create other people's livelihoods. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was also uh, some financial issues amongst with the different forms and everything. Being a, a trade organization allowed us to have the support of other organizations with uh, backing and funding. Mm -hmm. and good answers. Your, your beard game is completely on point. I love it. <laughs> I was wondering why Santa Claus had joined us. <laughs> um, actually, when I started uh, growing this, I told myself I was going to go full Santa. So here we are. Yeah, excellent work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wonderful. Most men, we have enthusiastic follicles. <laughs> well, I can't grow any up here anymore, so I got to start going that way. Right, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I was wondering if, for a while, I was wondering if you were planning to go back to the Van Dyke or if this was the official look. No, I think I like no, this. This is, this is the look <laughs> right now. It looks good. Yeah. Looks good. Besides, maybe somebody will pay me for it, you know? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Christmas is coming up. You always need a good Santa. Mm -hmm. Oh, a Santa who does caricatures. Actually, I would go I like to this. I would absolutely <laughs> go to a Santa that draws caricatures. That's, that's genius. Mm -hmm. All right, there's something there. Can I have 10% for that idea when you start making money off? Hey, if, if somebody ever hands me money for it, you're welcome to it. <laughs> you heard him. You got it. I I'll have a contract. I, an entire blank of just pictures of me with an empty knee, and then I'll draw the kid in. Oh, it's going to happen. You watch. <laughs> and then he'll put out a booklet of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh, I have a question regarding the case act. Yeah. Just by Bill. Uh, the maximum minimum is 30,000 reward, award. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure of those details. That sounds a lot like what we were saying that the minimum amount of the court <coughs> for the case act. I'd have to look that up. I'm sorry. Okay, can I can I advocate going up to a million, you know, because you got these big publishers maybe stealing our stuff for a million, and if they have to only give back thirty thousand, where's the big incentive to have them stop doing that is what I'm asking, you know. So hopefully the guild will work hard on whatever the minimum maximum up to a million to you know, whatever. The thirty thousand is barely living money. You know, living wage per year money earning. No, I hear you. Um, I I think now that it is a thing, a reality. Now we can really get into making it what it needs to be, in order to be a logical um, resource for uh, our industry. I know that um, we have had discussions um, re regarding that kind of thing um, within the leadership of the guild. Um, and I, I know that we're working on it. Okay, great. Thanks. So I'm assuming at this point the peg is widely available in bookstores and all that. Yeah, it, I know that you can order it um, right now on Amazon, and you can order it from uh, Penguin, I believe, uh, is the publisher. Um, let me make. I just want to make absolutely sure that I am giving you the correct information. Yeah. Um, yep. Uh, Penguin Random House. You can order it directly from them, Good. both digitally 
Um, it will be available in bookstores. Um, I don't know if it's available right now in bookstores. Um, like I said, we're just getting it uh, out to our membership right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but I know that you can order it right now on either Amazon or through uh, Penguin Random House directly. That's cool. It's and, just uh, as I remember buying them from the Olympia bookstore. I'm I'm sorry. Are there were two people talking. I didn't I didn't hear you. I just remember buying it at the U bookstore and uh, Elliot. So I wanted to be sure yeah, I could walk down the street and just get it. For me, I've always seen it like at a bookstore or something. I'm like, oh yeah, I, I, I need a new one of those. And I just pick it up. Uh, it's, an, it's one of those impulse pur purchases for me. Every time I see a new edition, I just grab it. Um, which, you know, now I, I just get it sent to me. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's available on uh, Amazon for $40 right now. There you go. And, uh, the other question is, why does it only come out every three years? It takes, well, a, it takes a while. It takes a while to compile all that data. And okay. we want to give it, we want to give the information time to um, right, but change a bit. If it's every single year, there might not be a difference in shifts in between individual disciplines. Whereas you, if we, when we give it a little bit of time, we can see some changes in individual industries and see if things that we have discussed in one edition play out to the next edition. Okay. All right. Well, I just checked online and yes, the one that I ordered has already shipped supposedly, so. <laughs> you know, you can always send it back. Amazon's amazing. True. I, seriously, I recommend give it give it to somebody else. They need it. I have to find somebody else. <laughs> Upcoming young artist. <laughs> Go over to Instagram, find somebody who's just starting. That brings me to my question. And one of the reasons that I I'm, I'm interested in um, this organization is that I'm I hire artists to work on my projects. And uh, I am, I, I've been in business for 30 years and many of my artists, sad to say, have either passed away or um, have changed uh, their professions. Um, so I wanted to find out what organization, rather than going Googling randomly, what organizations um, or groups have lists of not only established artists, but up and coming. Sure, sure. Uh, I can say for the Guild, um, one of the things that I really love about the Guild is that it maintains portfolios for their members that you can contact their members directly from. So you can go to the Guild website and review um, many do I portfolios. Have be, do I have to be a member? Do nope, I have to be nope. a member of the guild to do that? Even a little bit. You need to be a member in order to have a portfolio. You do not need to be a member to, to access. Nope. Okay. And, and just to, in case it wasn't clear where, when the Stowe said that, that is one of the nicer perks for plugins. Really. It, it, it's really fantastic. Uh -huh. um, uh, all too often, uh, when, uh, when you are a... Uh, when you're a freelance uh, professional, uh, whether it be an illustrator, uh, web designer, graphic designer, um, a lot of your business is word of mouth. And a lot mm -hmm. of word of mouth is where you put your work. Uh, and having that national platform uh, for your work, it, it can be very beneficial. I've gotten in the three years that I have been a member, I have gotten four jobs through the Graphic Artist Guild, nice. um, which is great. Um, it helps supplement, especially, I, I, I gotta say this, this past year, uh, has been one of the most lucrative years for my freelance business, despite the pandemic. I don't know what's going on about that, but, uh, mm -hmm. uh, but finding an actual job, I have two kids about to go to college. So I've been looking <laughs> for a mm -hmm. job because, you know, uh, college it's expensive. Um, <laughs> and that has been that's been a pain in the butt, but at least the freelance side of my life has been quite lucrative. 
<laughs> yeah, my kid is graduating tomorrow and is going to be going to DigiPen, and that's like a hundred. Oh yeah, that's way Yikes. expensive. Oh man, worth every penny. But he is so much. deserving because he's doing so much in that field already. But it just means that we really have to put it out. Uh -huh. There you go. His uh, is it your son? Yeah. His son. His son is tomorrow. So this is your a great extra. Your extra handbook. His son needs it. Uh -huh. <laughs> there you go. Erna, I just wanted to say that uh, we mail out a newsletter every month. Yes. We have in there uh, center pages with lots of cartoons. Some yes. are amateurs, some are pros. So if you want to be on our mailing list, um, you can pick from these cartoonists that are already being published in our little newsletter. Thank you. I did receive one copy um, okay. this week or last week. And uh, I'm... I'm Assuming that I'm on the list to receive the next ones as well. Yeah, good then. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love getting that every month. It's fantastic. Uh -huh. Yeah, sweet. Thank Ultimately, you. I'm a cartoonist at heart when it comes right down to it. Yeah. All right, um, is there anything else? Um, Bill, uh, what's the, I don't know what your itinerary is. We're all just now casually just hanging out. 